at 17. So you mm-hmm. going through life, life is good, you know, 17. Okay. Life hits you with with, with another punch what? directly to the ribs. Right, right. At 17, now I'm finally getting to live this dream of becoming a football star, right? Uh, we have a red and white football game. I'm finally the star. I'm going into my senior year. Summer of my uh, junior year, going into my senior year, I'm accused of a crime. And that crime shaped the next 25 years of my life. And before we, before we move forward, okay, we discuss the nature of the crime. Is, is that okay? Or um, if not, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we could discuss the nature of the crime. It was a sexual assault. Okay. And, uh, you know, and the thing about it is, it, it, it shaped my life for the good and for the bad. And a lot of times when I'm speaking about it and I share this part of the story, is at 17, I finally reached this dream to become a starting running back for my, my high school team, right? But instead of going to high school to start my senior year, I started in a jail cell. And so now this one dream that you had as that nine-year-old boy, that 15-year-old boy, you get it, and now it's taken away. And a lot of times when I share this part of the story, I blame myself. And then, and I also blame my parents and I also blame different people, but really it falls back on me because I didn't do what I was accused of, but I admitted to something I didn't do. Case in point, I go to the police station. I tell the officer what happened, right? He writes down everything I say, at least I think. He pushed this statement in front of me, right? He says, is that what happened? I said, you wrote down what I said? He said, yes, I did. I said, okay. He says, sign this and go be that football star because we know how people lie every day. Sign this. I did look you, at it. Do you have a lawyer handy at this time? No, no lawyer. It is just no you telling a detective what happened, your version of a story. He writes it down, hands you back a slip of paper. You don't read over it? Here's the kicker. I couldn't read. I couldn't read. So I signed the statement admitting guilt because I couldn't read the statement. I was illiterate. You're a senior, you're a senior in high school. Right. You made it that far. Yes. And still unable to read. Couldn't read. Wow. So that's why I hone myself and I'm so proud of my education now. And I tell kids, if I could have read that statement correctly, I wouldn't have never got any trouble because I wouldn't have signed it. So I signed a statement saying I did a crime that I didn't. And I'm sorry to interject here, but I really want to get a little deeper into this side of your story because Mm -hmm. it is a life defining moment. And (laughs) Somebody, I don't know who's going to listen to this video, right. this audio form, or watch it on YouTube in the future, mm-hmm. but somebody could find themselves in this situation or a situation that is very similar to this. Right. Your mom, and it takes me back uh-huh. to when you got stabbed. You're being pulled out on this gurney. Right. Your mom comes up. And the first thing she says is don't tell him nothing. Right. In your head, in your mind, don't trust the police. Right. Which is something that we as African-Americans, especially from impoverished communities. Right. We're brought up, we don't trust the law. Right. We've seen them do things that uh, we know is the norm, but from the outside looking in, People don't believe, oh, that's a cop. They're on the honest side of the law. They would never right. do X, Y, and Z. Right. And I'm bringing this point out because here it is. Mm-hmm. You trusted the law. Right. You right. told your version mm-hmm. of what happened, which was right. the honest to God truth. Right. And this officer 
mm -hmm. writes a completely different ver is this what i'm getting from your story yeah yeah because he said that i admitted to doing the act and I, i'm a virgin at this time i, I you know I, I didn't have no sex so you know so when i finally did get an attorney um i thought he was fighting for me and he says this is a punishment trial and the only thing I can do is try to keep you out of prison. You know? How, and I'm sorry, again, because yeah. this blows my mind. Yeah. How much different, it, when your attorney did read back the statement mm -hmm. that you supposedly mm -hmm. gave, how much different was it from the story you actually told? To, to be honest, it was very different. And to tell you the truth, I never ever read the statement until I was 38. So, okay, so when you had the opportunity yourself, yeah, as a mature yeah. man who's yeah. now a father at 38, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. go back and you are able to read it. We're gonna get into uh, right. your story because you've gone on to, to get your bachelor's degree. I'm so proud. To, to, to be able to say, and you going on to get your master's degree, mm -hmm. this didn't define your life. Right, no, so. When you read back that statement. Yeah. When, when I read back that statement, it, it was completely false. And how they communicated it, I don't even talk like that, you know? And, and so the indictment that I read, it said that I admitted to this crime. It was like, you know, saying that I completed the act, but it was just like real Pacific that X, Y, Z admitted to doing this very graphic, but like, just like scientific. And we don't even talk like that. So I, at that time, I never used those words. And so I, I didn't do it. I was like, man, I don't even talk like that. I, I didn't say that, but it was a black man, white woman. And that's kind of how it went. Is there any way, is there mm -hmm. any way just in the interest of giving mm -hmm the benefit right. of the doubt to, mm -hmm. to the officer in the system um, mm -hmm. in, in the state of Texas. Is right. there any way that they could have heard maybe the, in, even in nuances, is there any way that they could have misconstrued your words? I, I don't believe so. That much differently. But because like when, when you get accused of something like that, especially at that age, you think that you're forcibly taking something from somebody. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I know I didn't do that. So, and, and at that time I, I was a virgin, you know, and, but in the perception, they think this young, strong football player is having sex with all the girls. So in, in their mind, the perception is that I did this. And my perception is I'm trying to be cool and not tell them that I'm a virgin because I never said that. I'm just thinking like, hey, yeah, you know, they lie all the time and I'm being cool, but not knowing my life is on the line, you know? So I just kind of roll with it. And I thought that like he said, it's gonna be over. I didn't know how serious it was. You know, I didn't know that, you know, that I thought that temporary signature was gonna get me free and I can go play football, shoot the next week, you know, or go to high school. But that turned out to being arrested and uh, and to check this out, what's so crazy about it, they waited a day before my 18th birthday to arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I turned 18 in jail. 18, that they arrested me. And so this is a kicker. This is how crazy it was. So my mom's in jail at the same time. So the powers that be knew who my mom was. So when I get arrested, my mom's getting ready to go to prison for life for murder. And so the last time I see my mom, we have a son, mother, in-house jail visit. And she comes in the room and says, so I heard you went and got yourself in trouble. And at this time, you wanted your mom to say, son, what can I do to help you? You wanted some compassion. You wanted some love. And I say, but mom, I didn't do what they said I did. I can get life. And she looked at me and said, me too. 
wow. because she was 37 years old. So she couldn't really comfort me because she was still cared about her own life more than mine. You know, and so I just like, OK. And, you know, and she just kind of got up and walked away. And I just went back to myself. Is this the last time physically you saw your mother? Yes. So your mother is locked yeah. up literally at the same time that you're locked up. She's right. facing a murder charge. Uh huh. Looking at life in prison, you're facing a sexual assault slash yeah. rape charge. Right. You're looking at life in prison. Right. What was your sentence? My sentence was, I got sentenced to six months in county jail and I got placed on a 10 year probation. Okay, how, how does something like that happen with such a serious ch charge? Is this because lack of e evidence? Is it um, you're a minor at the time? How, how does your lawyer work that magic? Well, the whole time we were trying to get this thing called deferred adjudication probation, right? And so for the first six months, now I'm out of jail. I can't go to my high school and play football. So they put me at the alternative school while the trial is in uh, motion until we get a, a hearing. So what really happened with this situation was they were offering me five years in prison at 18 for this crime. They wouldn't give me probation. They wouldn't give me nothing. And how my lawyer explained it to me at the time, he says, I want to get you what Michael Irvin got. You like football. You know, Michael Irvin got caught with a lot of weed. Once he complete that probation, it won't be on his record. I want to get you that deferred. You. I said that. Well, I want that because I'm not a criminal. If you get me that, I'll prove to you that I can do it. Well, we go to court, right? Six months later, and they're offering me five years. And we have an all white jury. They picked it out. Court is supposed to start at nine o'clock. If I'm convicted and I'm, I'm proven guilty, I can get a hundred years in prison life. Well, court starts at nine. It's 9.15, it's 9.20, it's 9.30. The prosecution don't show up until about 9.45. And this guy walks in, falls out drunk in the courtroom. The DA, the prosecutor. And, and he's with the victim's mother. He's drunk. And uh, the judge is irritated and he's mad. And so it should have been grounds for a mistrial. I should have walked. But since this thing was so big and so public in the area, they couldn't let me walk free. So the judge called the two lawyers to his chambers and the deal was made, a plea bargain. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.